Hello and welcome to Beamer Folk. Time for me to have a shave. Well, I'd like to have a shave, but my shave has backed up. So I thought I'd take the opportunity to show how I repaired this. I have repaired it once before, about four or five years ago, but the cell that I replaced uh, in it uh, seems to have um, gone weak and doesn't seem to accept, well, it accepts charge, but it doesn't really hold the charge for the, very long. Just as a matter of information, this is a single cell um, charger. It's a single cell shaver. It's a Phillips shaver and the Phillips name is, well it's number, is H for Harry, Q for Quick, that's HQ6990. Um, single cell, not called a battery. A battery, strictly speaking, is a collection of cells. As this is a single cell, I describe it as a cell. The cell is, let me read it, I've got the tripod of the camera a little bit in the way, so bear with me. It's a um, uh, 2200 milliamp hour, uh, 1.2 volt cell. The, um, the uh, you know, where I obtained it from, the source, uh, I put that link um, down south. But uh, anyway, enough of the... Um, cell itself let's open up the shaver so just remove the head assembly like that move that to one side uh, the name or number of the Phillips shaver is actually written um, I don't know whether you can see that but it's written on the top left hand drive wheel around the you know, on a radius around that wheel. Now, um, I've got already prepared because I know which one it is. There are three screws and um, two of which is easily accessible. The third one takes the trimmer. I'm doing it from here because the tripod's a bit in the way. So let me just open this up. I've um, discharged this cell um, as much as I possibly can because obviously you've got to work on soldering the cell um, tabs into position and uh, should one actually short those out um, it probably wouldn't be uh, very good. So I've got two of the screws out and the third one, you flip that trimmer up and there it is. So let me undo that one there, put the three screws to one side and this should now open up um, in all its glory that's what it looks like let me just um, prop this under here then you can see it slightly more clearly hopefully There it is. Right, I referred to um, referred to the tool as a screwdriver. In fact, it's a torque head, and the torque head number is T for Tommy hyphen eight H for Harry. That's T eight H size, and uh, that seemed to remove the screws very well. Let me um, I'll progress further with the disassembly of this. So. Uh, Move that to one side there like that. You kind of have to push no, like that and then like that. Then that bit comes off there. Um, what am I removing now? Yeah, the whole of this lifts away to and keep the contacts clear of anything. You've got obviously a two-sided board, components on both sides. You've got a little mechanical, you've got a little mechanical switch here, um, integrated circuit chip in there that does the control. Transformer, a couple of capacitors, resistor. Um, what I seem to remember doing, uh, I remember actually unsoldering 
these motor wires which is a good thing so that I can gain access to the board itself. Um, it's uh, the soldering of this and the general assembly of a new cell into this is not quite for the faint-hearted or inexperienced because you are um, the, this this new battery I've made sure is only about third charge but obviously you can so readily so easily short these terminals out and cause yourself a problem so anyway the next stage is for me to unsolder the uh, motor wires before I um, take the motor wires off I thought I would test the uh, motor current um, to the old cell uh, let me just do this it's negative there I've connected up my meter in the current range at uh, 20 amps I'm expecting a, a degree of current from this drawn even though the battery is a bit weak. Let's just have a look. There it is. And it's coming out at 0.25 of an amp. Quarter of an amp. That's quite a high current, isn't it? I just um, put the blades on, shaver blades on, and just, see, just act as a bit of a load. <laughs> see how that works. What sort of current it goes up to now? Obviously, it's not quite the not quite the load that um, that it normally experiences. That's it. That's better. Am I still in shot? I think I am. There we are. Let's just uh, connect this up and uh, see what current is drawn with a load on. I'm bypassing this little switch with the current meter. Blimey. There we are. 0.72, 0.72 of an amp. 720 milliamps. That's quite high. Now there's the board isolated one side. That's the integrated circuit side. Flip it over. And there's the old side with the original old cell, not the actual cell that was that was supplied when the shaver was new, but my five-year-old replacement cell. Okay, I've just removed the cell, uh, and I'm starting to think about reinstalling the new cell. Uh, one of thing, one or two things to be mindful when you do this. One is be careful not to short out any um, close um, printed circuit board copper lands as you desolder. Uh, you've got to be extremely careful there. And please make a note of polarity. The polarity on the board is negative here for the cell and positive here for the cell. Check double check and triple check you've got that right. Thank you. Without soldering I very carefully inserted the new cell and as you can see I haven't soldered it in yet. The soldering tags are sticking out here and they're quite long. Um, I prefer to trim them before I solder them but when you trim them, again it's very critical to get the length of that um, tag uh, to the right length. If you make it too long, it will probably likely as not short out to the next component. And if you get it too short, you probably won't be able to solder it at all. So again, it's quite critical. Um, they are quite excessively long really, the tags on these, but I suppose better longer than shorter. There we are, all nicely uh, soldered in. Uh, the holes for the tags to go through I had to clean out with a small pin because the tags themselves were uh, a tight fit with the um, uh, rectangular hole that's provided on the board. And uh, 
as neatly soldered as I can and you can see that I made absolutely sure that I didn't short out any other components as I went. I think that would be a bit disastrous. Now I just check uh, that the um, cell voltage is in place and correct. So all I need to do, the positive goes to the right hand side here and the negative over here near the main socket and I'm getting 1.293 volts. So it looks as though, thank goodness, nothing is apparently shorted out, uh, which is good news. And all I've got to do now is solder the motor wires back on. There we are, motor wires carefully soldered back into place. Here and here, negative being there, positive being there. I've reflowed the solder joints actually at the motor itself just to ensure that there's a good connection there. And uh, now let me test that the motor runs. Sort of put one hand there. There you go. Switch it off. And that is a Phillips. HQ6990 partially assembled and as far as I know fully working. I'll just get the thing fully assembled so you can have a look at it fully assembled and we just operate it and uh, hopefully everything's okay. There we are fully assembled and ready to make me shaven and fully respectable hopefully anyway. This is Beamer signing out for now.